one. We'll go two more. These guys are just doing a little activation for Dave's, uh, basically TVA, uh, which is kind of internal um, abdominal musculature. So the big thing you're looking at here, if you're doing these yourself, is how much can you get your belly button to move? So as he inhales, he pushes his belly button to the ceiling, exhales, pulls it hard in. You just see the ribs pull down as well too, and hold. And so we're starting with squats today. It'll be a second movement. So we warm up all the stuff we're gonna use and big thing for making sure his uh, spine and back stays stable. So the next one we do is called a dead bug variation. So the thing that he's doing here, his arms and legs are moving basically to make more force um, trying to pull his spine and pelvis out of place. So the whole goal for Dave is just to keep his abs still, his spine still, and his pelvis from moving. Um, so again, it's the, even though you see his arms and legs moving, not doing anything to train the arms and legs, as they just go out, they wanna pull his spine into extension, pull it into rotation. And so again, what you can't see here is abs are tight, belly button's still pulled in, and just trying to keep that whole midsection locked in stone, because when you're squatting, that's basically what you wanna have happen is your spine doesn't move while it's under load. Good. So do the knee straight one next. So extend the quad, raise up. Press in, about a five second hold. So the main muscle we're trying to bias here is uh, rectus femoris which again is a muscle that crosses over one of your quad muscles, so it crosses over the knee and crosses over the hip. So a big one for keeping his hips stable um, and on moving. And again, we want to keep the hips still, especially when he's squatting, again, because that will help keep the spine still. And that's a big muscle when your hip flexors that does that. And so for all these, we're just looking for good, strong contractions. It's not like anything that's set in stone hard science. We do about five second contractions. And again, it's essentially, for lack of a better word, just kind of waking up the muscles we're gonna use. So again, before you can have really high output contractions, you just need some lower output contractions to kind of build up. And then I joke too, is the same as everybody else, is Dave will come in from outside of the gym thinking about external stuff. And if you're just kind of thinking about muscles contracting, thinking about your body, having some body awareness, that will just help kind of get your brain ready to start training. And then the last one we'll do is bridges. So brace, glute squeeze. So a combination of bridges here for the last one. So main muscle he's working is obviously going to be the glutes. And again, big thing for, obviously you're using them when you squat, but also keeping the pelvis nice and stable is your glutes actually need to work because there are plenty of people that can squat without using their glutes at all and just end up putting more of it on their hams, their adductors, and their lower back. So you can see first he's bracing his abs tight, contracting the glutes hard, five second hold. Good, we'll just do one more of those. And so that's a big thing too, having that, being able to do both of those at the same time, keep the abs tight and contract the glutes hard. And that kind of trains the body to do those two things, spine still, pelvis still, because those are the things we want when we're squatting. So hard squeeze, four, three, two, one. Toes to the nose, hard squeeze, four, three, two, one. And so last thing we're doing here again before we squat, just getting some stuff around the ankles warmed up. So again, obviously your feet are the first thing in contact with the floor. What your feet and ankles do can to a big time dictate what everything else on the way up does. So same thing, we're just getting some contractions of uh, the big muscles that move the main motion that your ankle does, which is plantar and dorsiflexion. So when he's doing that one, he's thinking about driving the ball of his foot into the platform, pushing his ankle to the ceiling. And that's getting a big contraction of your calf muscles. And then this one, kind of feeling like he's trying to pull his toes to his nose. So again, really contracting, plantar flexing, or dorsiflexing, excuse me, as far as possible, and squeezing the muscle that's on the front of your shins there. So when you feel like you get shin splints, that can be a good exercise to do to get rid of that, train that muscle that's responsible for that dorsiflexion. So we got Dave doing for his squats. Squats to a box. <laughs> if I say box squats, technically a box squat. This is something especially a lot of powerlifters will use. We actually deload and sit on the box and then stand up. We're using the box as a gauge for depth. Just two more, Dave. So, you know, when you go too low in a squat, depending on where the range of motion is going from, if, if Dave goes any lower, his pelvis turns under and his spine starts to round, in which case we want to train all the things in the lower body. So we want all the motion at his knees and his hips. If his spine rounds, then obviously it's motion coming from the spine. 
And that's pretty much just a, a big universal no-no for squats is if your spine rounds, especially once you have weight on your back and under load, you're going to probably compress the discs the way they're not supposed to be compressed. And the other thing as well, too, is we've had Dave do different squat variations in the past. We've had him squat using the heel elevation and getting a lot of range of motion at the knee. Dave is a couple months off of a knee surgery and overall progressing really, really well. But we're still not really loading the crap out of full knee flexion. So we've switched from doing a lot of full knee flexion squats to a little bit more of a hip dominant squat. So using a box is great when you kind of want an even balance of what's working. So uh, opposed to what we used to do before, he's gonna have a little bit more glutes, hams, adductors working here, and still plenty of quads as well too. Um, so again, if you're using uh, the box, it's definitely gonna promote a little bit more of a hip dominant squat as opposed to a fully knee dominant squat. <laughs> Good, Dave. Two to go. You go. Stay tight. One more. curls here. Um, I love seated leg curls, uh, especially when it's in the middle of a leg workout where you're going to do another squat variation. We're going to finish with some hack squats. So Dave still needs, you know, the strength to have his back and his pelvis stabilized. So lying leg curls are great. We'll still do them, but sometimes they tend to require more stuff of your lower back and your core to keep it stable. So sometimes when people do them, their low back starts to fatigue a little bit. So the nice part with seated leg curls is they're so locked in and stable. It doesn't fatigue your back. Um, so again, Dave's back will be nice and fresh when we go and do hacks. We'll go two more. The biggest thing here, if you're looking and you're doing it right, is the only thing that should be moving is the lower leg. Everything else should be lock and stone. Go one more, Dave. So if you're doing it right, press that thigh pad tight down into your thighs. Keep your hips nice and still the whole time and own that end range like Dave did. So that's the big thing that people do here is they kind of launch the weight, you know, so they'll get it going really fast and you'll see that the end, sometimes the pad actually comes off of people's ankles or they swing and they catch it. Again, if you're going to go to that range of motion, make sure you're actually using your hams there. And we're going to superset that with leg extension. So same exact thing because we're just using the knee joint is we just want everything else locked in stone. So for warm ups, that's not too bad, but as we get heavier, Dave's literally going to pull himself down, tighten the seat, make sure his hips don't move. For both of these, to make sure everything's lined up right, you want to make sure that your kneecap is basically pointing straight forward or up the whole time, meaning you don't want it pointed out at all or the knees turned out. Because again, the force that the machine applies is straight in this plane. So you want to make sure the knees lined up straight in that plane as well too. And again, that's just a big thing. For one, you'll get more tension through to the quads or in the seated leg curl to the hams, but it's also a joint saver. And you'll see, especially here, the seated leg curl, you know, both ends have a lot of benefit, especially on the leg extension. The biggest benefit is the top. So again, if people are going to cheat or mess up the exercise, that's the place they tend to do it. They tend to launch her to go real quick in and out of there. So you see Dave getting a good hard squeeze and hold and contraction at the top, not bouncing it. Let's go two more. And again, for lack of a better word, the, I think the best description for having good form there is make sure you own that range. Good hard contraction of the quad. One more, Dave. Harvard squeeze. Perfect.
Good. A couple more. I'm going to help you on that end. Hard squeeze. Good. Yep. I got you now. Two more. Smooth, hard squeeze right there. Perfect. One more just like that. Control. Hard in, hard in, hard in. Squeeze. Perfect. Good rest, brother. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. count. Hard squeeze. Good. Good. A couple more. Good. Last two, Dave. You got them. Come on. Hard squeeze. Good. One more. Squeeze, nice. Good set. So the one we got next here, guys, is um, just an RDL variation or stiff leg deadlift variation. Um, and again, we're doing the, the, the variation here is using the band across the hips. So all that does is normally when you do a deadlift and you come to the top, there's no tension. You can literally just relax. The bar is very close to your hips. So this just keeps tension at the top. Everything else you do the exact same as you would a normal RDL. So all the things that Dave's thinking here, the most important anybody can think when they're doing RDLs is hips back and forward. When you start to think up and down, that's when you can start to get your spine doing a lot of stuff and your back doing a lot of work. So we're doing this mainly for hamstrings and glutes. So all he's thinking is push his hips as far back to the back wall or towards the mirror as you can get, squeezing glutes as hams, and keeping them squeezed hard into the band at the top. And again, most of the time when you do an RDL, there's no tension at the top. So there's really no point to get that hard squeeze and contraction into there, but with the band, keeps a ton of tension there as well too. So just basically takes a good exercise already, like an RDL or stiff leg deadlift, and just adds more tension to it at a point of range of motion where you normally lose it. So again, I just tell everybody, you just kind of want to forget about the bar. You'll see that Dave's back stays perfectly straight. The only thing moving is his hips, glutes, hard through, squeeze. Two more, Dave. Hips back, hips back. Hard through squeeze, and you'll see how controlled the negatives are, and you'll see that nice pause at the bottom. Again, that's where the weight is making it hardest, and where most people tend to bounce or use other shit aside from their back, or excuse me, aside from their glutes or their hands, more likely to use their back. And also, that's the place you're most likely to get injured. So again, if you go really fast, or you just start to move your back at the bottom, just trying to move the weight further up or down. Um, again, you're likely to put it on your spine, you know, cause some disc issues or something like that. So control pace, own that bottom. And again, a lot of people think about, well, how low do I have to bring it? People always have this idea that more is better, like they bring it lower to the ground is better. But just the reality too that people don't think about, like, depends on how long your arms are, how long your torso is. So someone might bring it lower to the ground easier because they've got longer arms and shorter legs. So it just seems like, oh, he's got more range of motion, he's going lower. We actually could have less range of mo motion occurring at the hips with someone that's taller, that's got longer legs or even shorter arms, relatively speaking. So. Stay tight. Really good. One more. Glutes hard through. Good. Guys, doing hack squats here. I'm um, doing it a little bit more for quad dominance. 
Same thing, we're gonna take a little bit of a wider stance, generally just allows your hips to move better. And then for quads, you wanna take your feet as low as you possibly can without your heels coming up um, dramatically off the platform at the bottom. And that will help you keep bias more quads. Hips are still gonna work, glutes are still gonna work, of course, but that'll keep a little bit more on your quads. As far as everything else, it's the same thing. Motion should be at the knees and the hips. You want good contact from your back all the way through your upper back. So it's never coming off of the pad, never rounding or never arching. Hips stay relatively still. And that's the advantage of putting something like a hack last. Good rep, David, we'll go three more. Is because it's locked in, because it's stable, we've kind of got a little bit of everything fatigued here, but we can still train your whole lower body through a pretty good range of motion, get some good output, and keep the risk of injury relatively low. And if you look at the band here on this last one, you'll see at the bottom, it stretches, applies some assistance, and gets relaxed about halfway through his range of motion to completely relax at the top. And similar to uh, any other pressing motion, like we use chains on the chest press, is the same thing. You're stronger at the top of a hack than you are at the bottom. So the idea is to have a difference from the bottom to the top. We just want it heavier at the top than it is at the bottom. And reverse bands are one of the ways to go about that. And so you'll see that at the bottom, we're getting some assistance, maybe taking off 50 pounds or so. At the midpoint, obviously, it's half of that. And by the time you get halfway through for this band, it's really not helping at all from the halfway point pretty much to the top. Um, and so again, doing an ant only when you get to your working sets, it feels better, healthier, and easier um, from a good standpoint on your joints and brutally hard at the muscle because you get to the point where you're used to actually getting a little bit of a break coming up and you don't get that break because the weight technically keeps getting heavier as you come to the top of the range of motion. So great way to be more taxed on the muscle and at the same time feel and be a little bit easier on the joints. Two more. Last one. Great job, just like that. You don't need to do the pullback. Yep, just the top on these. Let's get a good hard squeeze. Whatever, two, three seconds. Feel like a good contraction. And right back, hard squeeze. Good. Just two more. So we got Dave doing a little superset to finish calves. Honestly, at the end of a leg workout, I'm not gonna have like the craziest calf workout of all time. So I really just wanna take him through a nice full range of motion. Half of it is keep Dave's ankles moving as well as they can. And then we'll get some blood in there as well too. So it's, uh, we'll have sometimes we'll put calves after upper body um, or even sometimes earlier in the beginning of the workout where we'll be able to hit them with a little bit more load and really get them, you know, something that's gonna help them grow a lot. But sometimes honestly is keep the ankles healthy, keep some blood in there, keep some stimulus on them and uh, they'll at least obviously keep them from losing any size. So this superset's nice because that loads the calves pretty much in a fully shortened position, which almost no one gets to in training. Um, and then from here, we're just gonna take him through pretty much the rest of the range of motion. So see on the shortened position, he's got a pause at the top. Here, we're just getting a pause at the bottom. And that's just a really nice sequence to train the calves through their full range of motion. Um, and anecdotally, it's painful. You get a nasty pump going through it as well too. Set up on these for everybody. So the same is there as here. You know, I always tell everybody, keep everything tracking in a straight line. Don't roll out on the outside of your feet. If anything, you have a little bit more pressure on the ball of your feet. And for everybody, you always want to at least have really good control at the bottom. I recommend at least a second pause because it's really easy. Three more, Dave. Just to bounce off of your tendon, tendon store elastic uh, tension so you can literally move weight by bouncing on them like big giant rubber bands, essentially. So by taking that pause there, you're at least using a lot more muscle to get it moving as opposed to, again, connective tissue. Good there. 
What's up guys? So got a quad workout today, uh, just finished up. Well, I shouldn't say quad, pretty much a total lower body workout. Uh, so the preface of this workout is uh, same as the other one. One, just kind of building back up, um, you know, getting some consistent training in. So this is our second round back. Uh, and also Dave's a couple of months off of coming uh, off a of knee surgery, which honestly is just kind of aware of now, not really limited in the training in any capacity. Um, so now we're just looking for a nice steady build back. And honestly, today's workout was great because pretty much everything progressed a little off of last week. I probably added in um, three working sets over the course of the workout, um, and we increased the weight, I believe, on three different, uh, four different exercises of the five exercises we did. And so again, that's kind of what we're looking at every single week is just a little progression off of the last. Um, and again, just a really complete leg workout. So if you guys want a great leg workout for yourself, this literally gets everything from quads, glutes, hams, even to a little bit of calves at the end. So. I, when I originally came to start training with Joe, it was specifically for legs because um, I always noticed that all the guys he was training with had massive, massive legs. And it's something I've struggled with over the years and not because I've neglected legs or ignored legs. It's just that I've had so many injuries over the years, so it's been hard for me to train them. I've had back surgery and I've torn my hamstring twice. I've had knee surgery. Uh, so I've really had to work around injuries and train legs and I just didn't know the proper way to get to them without, you know, to, my mentality was all always old school that you had to use like heavy, heavy poundages. Mm -hmm. And with all my injuries, it just led to more injuries. So it just wasn't working. So I started working uh, with Joe uh, for legs and then that led into working with everything else because I got so much uh, uh, great uh, gains with my legs and they've really come like a long way in the last couple of years. And yeah. I'm pretty uh, proud of them now from where they were. And for a tall guy too, and who never really had great legs. I mean, my legs have come a long way. Yeah. So, and by uh, <clears throat> by meathead standards, I'm I'm pretty average guy. But by Hollywood standards, yeah. I'm a I'm a mutant. Yeah, average, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it depends on who you compare yourself to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but honestly, like the legs are coming along great. We've had good progress over the past couple of years. And again, you don't want to you don't want to limit it yourself because I'm positive that Dave's legs will continue to get bigger. I, I think his best legs are are still to be had. But like you said, it's pretty nice considering. Most guys have had as many injuries as Dave use that to, as an excuse or don't know how to work around them to make any progress. And then honestly, too, most guys, once you hit 40, 45, even from competitive bodybuilder standpoint, the legs start to take a downturn. So the fact that for a lot of reasons, Dave's moving against the grain of, of things. I mean, that's at the end of the day, like I said, you don't want to some people use that all as an excuse, but it's it's something to be aware of. And it's, you know, you pat yourself on the back for it for a little bit because it's nice to be you know, moving the direction opposite of how everybody else is going. So, yeah. Yeah. I get compliments on my legs all the time, which is a pretty good feeling, you know, yeah. considering where I came from. But anyway, when I go into like costume fittings and stuff and they always have struggling to fit me in this stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So it was a great leg workout yeah. today. And, um, and honestly, so this is like one to be building off of stuff. So even over the next couple months, you know, as we kind of check back in and hopefully get some more videos coming along, We'll see the progress of how the workouts are same as it was from last workout to this work, progressing up just a little bit more and a little bit more, which is a combination of everything. Form's always gonna be super strict, making it super hard, super slow, where the exercises are hardest. Um, but poundage and how much volume, so how many sets and how many reps will keep slowly creeping up you know, to appropriate levels too, because like I said, even a couple of months from now, the legs are gonna be kind of another level as well too. So. Yeah. And again, um, we're always like fighting my schedule because yeah. It's just hard for me to be consistent. I may, I may be getting somewhere and like we train a couple of weeks consistently and yeah. making great gains, but then I go away for three months and come back and it's like starting all over. So it's like, you have know, to build and progress again. So it's, it's a constant like a yeah. changing, evolving thing with me. So it's not like, I'm not the easiest guy to train, but yeah. I've made some really, really great gains with Joe. So I've stuck with him Sweet. and we built this gym. Yeah. Keep them close. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yep. So yeah, that was it. And as always, if you guys uh, like the workout, give us some feedback, comments below and more to come.